This Pac-12 Women's Gymnastics Championship is brought to you by Opus Bank. Opus Bank, the official bank of the Pac-12 Conference. And by State Farm. State Farm is here to help life go right. A beautiful night in the desert as we go to session number two. The Bruins of UCLA, number three. The Red Rocks of the U of U are number four. Washington is number eight, and California is number 10. UCLA, for the third year in a row, starts on the vault. They will follow the Olympic order all the way through. Washington had their choice to either start on beam or floor, and they decided to start on floor. UCLA has won 17 conference championships, 12 of them, while Valerie Condos Field has been the head coach. She's standing by with Sam Peshek. regular season how is this team different than in past years i really believe that this team believes that they can win and they feel it they feel that pulse inside the gym outside the gym in everything they do and consequently we really haven't had any issues it's been one of the easiest years of my coaching career which then makes it the most fun you're the number one seed at pac-12 championships what's the key to starting off strong on vault on vault, we need to go big. We need to do big, beautiful form and not worry about sticking. When you worry about sticking, that's when you make mistakes. So hopefully they can just release it, and we'll start off with a clean, strong first event. Thank you. UCLA has 124 perfect tens in its all-time career. In 2018, they've had nine alone. It sounds like a big number, but they had 10 last year, and they've done them on some of the toughest events. We've seen Peng Peng Lee get it on balance beam twice three times actually march 11th i forgot about that last one three times <laughs> so ucla got to choose and they picked starting on vault the olympic order is vault bars beam and floor ucla is ranked in the top five on all four events they're number two in the country on the vault the problem for ucla last year a slow start nia dennis with the first vault of the night and that's a big one. She said it perfect. They've got to go big on this first event. The good news for UCLA is that they have strong technical vaults. If they stick to good technique, the landings will drop right in place. Nia Dennis, a Pac-12 Freshman of the Year candidate, ranked in the top 25 on that event and has 10 straight vaults at 9.825 or better. Utah, number four in the country, number two seed in this event, begins on the bars. They're number seven in the country on this event, and they start with Tiffany Lewis. Tiffany Lewis is a two-time Pac-12 champion. Co-champion on the vault last year, floor champion in 2016. Well, this is a great event for Utah. It's about the details. Hitting the handstand right there. Clean form, legs glued together, big amplitude on releases. Nice position on the catch. Beautiful form down to the low bar. And all that's left is the dismount. Lots of speed carrying double layout. That's a great start. It might be better than great. Well, this Utah team on Tuesday practiced the rotation starting on bars. They got to keep their cool, they got to do what they do. The Golden Bears of California, four seed in this tournament, number 10 in the country. And they begin on the balance beam where they're ranked 16th in the nation. Any Chelsea chance? Shue is the first up. To talk to their coaches before the meet and I always like to walk through the beam lineup. Front aerial directly connected to that back handspring. But I specifically asked, you know, why Chelsea in the leadoff? She's been in this role, been in this position for most of the season. This is the exact lineup they've used as they found that rhythm. And her coaches described her as just super aggressive. And she has just natural habits that make her beautiful on this event. Her details, her presentation and handwork. And a solid scorer. Eight straight on the balance beam of 9-8 or better. Little smile there on the full turn. Mm -hmm. 
Setting up for the dismount combination. Side aerial, layout full, and that's what she needed to do. And that's what coaches want to see. Justin Howell, who told me before the meet that when things were going well for California, he told them to trust the process, and he showed them a tape of Steph Curry missing three-pointers. And then two nights later, Steph Curry setting the all-time NBA record for three-pointers in a game. And he said, trust the process. Absolutely. Trust your training is what my coach used to say. You don't train hours and do this over and over to not let it show up at the meet. The gym dogs of the University of Washington, the number three seed coming in again. They finished third last year, number eight in the country. They chose to begin on floor. Now we'll find out why. Michaela Nelson first that was the first question i asked at least ray when i saw her and she said you know what it's a great event for us so is the balance beam so let's bookend our meet with our two best start on floor end on beam opening the routine high double top gave her plenty of time for a great landing Michaela had been in the bars lineup in every meet and at the mid-season joined the floor lineup. So she's been in it now seven weeks in a row. Her best is a 9875. Combination front layout front full. Fighting for that landing. That's one thing this team has worked really hard on. Is focusing in on the execution of every single element along with the presentation in their routines. Beautiful flexibility on that lead pass. Finishing clean double pike. Wow, strong first routines for every single team. Kayla Nelson, sophomore from Maryland, with the opener for UW. So back to the vault. This is where we start picking up scores. Nia Dennis, 9825. Certainly they will take that. Anna Glenn is in the two hole. She's been in the vault line at the last five meets. Beautiful. The Yurchenko layout fold, the most popular vault you'll see. And you'll see some of the best done here in this session. Nice position, nice height. Didn't quite have the same distance that Nia Dennis had, but a clean landing. Remember, the Yurchenko layup full starts from a 9.95, so a perfect score would match that. She had that small deduction on the landing. And a Glenn, a sophomore from North Carolina. Tiffany Lewis went 9.85 for Utah. Utah has four all-arounders, as Amanda told you at the top of the show, and here's one of them. McKenna Merrill Giles. Nice deep breath mounting right to the high bar. She has an individual victory on bars this year and is coming off a career high 9925 against Georgia. Beautiful combination and a high flying release to start the routine. McKenna has a beautiful long line. It makes her stand out, not just on the uneven bars, but across all four events, especially when she does that. Nails the handstand, and this combination stalled her directly to that double tap. And that's a perfect landing. That's two in a row for Utah. At the beginning of the season, Tom Farden did bars 101, and this was one of the elements. He said, drill the landings like a lawn dart. There it is. Remember, five scores count. You stick every landing. You save yourself five tenths on every single event. 9-8-5 opener for Chelsea Shue on the beam for the Golden Bears of Cal. Kiana George, freshman from McKinney, Texas, has been mostly good on this event. Eight times, she's been 9-8 or better, and she has an individual win. Well, she is known right here for this element. Double Wolf, the yes. George. She actually, the triple is the George. Well, the she triple. is only doing a double. That is still a very unique turn and fun to watch. When I talked to Liz about that, she said that's one of her favorite things is to be able to keep some of those unique elements in her athletes' routines. A balance check there. 
Resetting up, regrouping for her tumbling element. That can't spring layout. Step out. A little tentative on those landings. Kiana, two-time junior Olympic national team member, admitted she almost gave up gymnastics. I think even the best sometimes think about it. Think about stepping away, but something pulls you back. And then you see them in these type of moments. You want every little gymnast out there to watch these young ladies and know it's not an easy road, but it is well worth it. Stick with it. Well, to have your moment here at a Pac-12 championships, wow. She gives a lot of credit to one of your old teammates, 96 Olympia J.C. Phelps. That's a new dismount for her right there. She had performed a double tuck earlier in the season. This turn, though, it's always wows the crowd. <laughs> she makes it look easy, but that's a great view. It is very detailed, and you have to be in a precise position to make it. 9825 for Nelson. Ebony Roberson now. Washington's two best events are floor and beam. Those are the two events they had to choose from to start. I just wondered if Elise Ray Stats, the Washington head coach, thought, wow. I don't want to burn my two best events in the first two rotations. Spread them out. Start with one, end with one. Well, floor can be such a great event to start on, really kicks off the energy for your team. Two big front tumbling passes, back to back. Their coaches feel like this has been one of their most improved events because they've been able to clean up their tumbling and those landings. Roberson has just been cranking out the 9 8s. She's done it nine times this year. Our best 9 9 against Oregon State. The Beavs put up the high score in session number one. So the first order of business for all four of these teams is to get past Oregon State's 196 525. Wow, great save there. I could see that on the takeoff. It drifted back just a little bit. Anytime that happens, it can make that landing feel a little early or that you're not able to get that chest up. So she did a good job adjusting and staying on her feet. 9-8 for Anna Glenn. So UCLA last year, starting in the same order, had subpar performances on both vault and bars and never recovered. They're okay so far. Paulina Trotz, a two-time German national champion on the vault. Beautiful technique in the air, nice distance and height. Just that slide back on the landing. Watch the technique coming off the table. Pushes all the way through, gets that nice layout going before she generates the turn. Last year, UCLA finished fifth on the vault, tied for sixth on the bars. They were sub-49 on the bars. We'll get to that when we get to that. 9-8-5s for both Lewis and Merrill Giles. Here's another of the all-arounders, Missy Reinstatler. Just about anywhere else in the country, Reinstatler would be the big name on campus. But you have Michaela Skinner, you have Kari Lee, McKenna Merrill Giles. You gotta fight for attention in Salt Lake City. Well, she has beautiful gymnastics. Her execution stands out. Her details, her toe point, feet glued together. A little separation there down to the low bar. to welcome that audience that was watching softball. Welcome to Tucson and the Pac-12 Gymnastics Championships, session number two. Jim Watson alongside two Olympians, Amanda Borden and Sam Peshek. We are midway through the first rotation. UCLA is on the vault, Utah on the bars, California is on the beam, and here's Cassidy Keelan.
Harris bringing the hail step out. Confident landing there. They put up two solid routines so far. We talk about it all so often. Starting on this event can be challenging. When I talked to Liz Crandall Howell, she said, you know what this team is great at is they have a rhythm, they use keywords, and she feels like they can personally get into a groove that really helps this lineup find that rhythm they need to be successful. Keelan's been in a mini slump on the beam of late. Got to put that out of her mind and perform. Finishing round up one and a half, hop forward on the landing, but a hit routine, and there's Liz Crandall Howe right there. The first one to greet her and give her that big hug. Liz Crandall Howe, a seven-time U.S. national team member in her own right. Roberson just the 9-6 on the floor. If you're new to gymnastics, six compete on each event, but you only count five scores, so you can drop one. Here's Zoe Schaefer. Clean double talk to start the set. Zoe is essentially a floor specialist and has paid off nine times. She has gone 9-8. The only other event which she's appeared, she had one balance beam routine. Front combination pass, finishing with that stag jump. She's always been great at this event. She's a little powerhouse. She has nice high-flying tumbling in her routine this year. A little attitude throughout. A senior now, when she was a freshman, exploded on the scene, winning her first four floors. And we said, who's this kid on Montlake who wins her first four in college? And then she had an injury at UCLA and Achilles that ended her season. Took a couple years to get back to form. difficult to regroup after you put up a score like 9-6, so that's exactly what this team needed right now to regroup. This is a great event for them, so they need to pick up the momentum. Absolutely. It is key right now for Washington. They're going to have to go four for four, closing out this rotation. They still have Hoffa, Washington, and Burleson to come. Meantime, Melina Trotz hits 9-8-2-5. Both she and Dennis with the best score there. Here's Kyla Ross, Olympic gold medalist. part of the reason why. Yeah, she is unbelievable. You know, Kyla Ross is an elite gymnast who's known for her incredible technique and form. Well, she has brought that to her college career. When you have beautiful, perfect technique, that's what makes you consistent in gymnastics. You see her do that over and over. She's got the height, the distance, the form, and the landing. Ranked 18th on the vault coming into this meet. Miss Val, Valerie Condos Field, UCLA's head coach for the last 28 years. Miss Val's won more than 500 meets. Go back to Kari Lee and Utah on the bars. Utah, by the way, has the all time winningest coach in gymnastics history. And you got to figure that Greg Marsden is looking in, right? He's always watching. <laughs> <laughs> Big Pike Yeager, a little bit close to the bar, but she was able to pull out the shoot over. Marsden won a thousand, by the way, which is ludicrous. Combination work here at the end, front giant. Directly connected to that double tuck. Came up a hair short, had to hop forward. She has a couple of nine nines this year. One of them came in this room, McHale Center, in the dual meet against Arizona. Couple of 985s for California on the beam, so they're starting to put together a really good rotation. Alicia Galarzo. Galarzo has a win on the beam this year and has been consistently high, six times at 9-8 or better. Nice fluid position there on the combination for an aerial flip play. Little balance check to the right, but she snapped those arms down back in place. Required 
complete pass. You see a variety of different elements. Some of them are required. They're also trying to earn bonus points back. Finishing one and a half twist. You know, when we saw California in January, they were ranked 47th in the country on balance beam. Now they're 16. Well, we know that event keeps you in the mix, so that's a good one to continue to improve on. Kristen Huff on the floor for the Gym Dogs of Washington. Huge double fight. Hoffa has gone back-to-back -back season and career high nine nines on floor. Front layout, front full. That second tumbling pass. has just been money for UW on the floor. And again, after Robertson's troubles, they had to nail it. They had to go four for four. Schaefer has turned it in. Now Hoffa has turned it in. Two more left. 9-9 nine, nine for Kyla Ross is the high score in the meet so far. And here comes another top 15 gymnast, number 15 in the country on vault. Felicia Hano only has one under 9825. It's a big vault. Yurchenko one and a half twist. It's difficult to land. She'll get a small deduction for that hop forward, but at this point, that's a safe plan. When it comes to the one and a half, you do not want to come up short because it's so easy to sit it down. So right there, she came up a little bit forward on the landing. It's exactly what you want to do. You can see she was in ready position for that landing. That Start value is a 10.0. Hano, yeah, Hano in the five spot and Pua Hall in the anchor spot for UCLA. Both 10 -0 start values on their vaults. Kari Lee, a 9.775. Feels a little soft. Kim Tesson and Michaela Skinner still to go for the Red Rocks on bars. Opening with a release right there. Oh, you know, she missed that in the warm up. She just came off a hair early. It's all it takes. You have to be able to get that dowel back over the bar. Now she has to pick the routine up from there. She gets a 5 tenth deduction for that. Recovering from a, a shoulder injury, so perhaps there's still a little rust to knock off before regionals. Oh, twisting double back. Wow, what a great finish to that set. So now it's going to make Skinner's routine not only more interesting, but more important because Skinner's going to have to hit. Yeah, this is where the mistake happened. She just came off just a hair early. You could see her grip was on the bar, but that dowel's got to be completely over the bar so that you can hold the force of that release move through the bottom. Couldn't get back to it. Tony Ann Williams. An Olympian in 2016 for Jamaica and one of the best collegiate gymnasts in the country. And one of my favorites to watch because she has a smile on, on her face majority of the time she's in here. She has the big gymnastics like that. Difficult standing front to a standing layout step out that meets her tumbling requirement, but it's unique because you have to be strong and powerful to do that. California had two really impressive meets this year. Again, 
against Utah, in which Tony Ann Williams won it with a, an amazing score on the floor in the final rotation. She also had a 9-9-2-5 against UCLA on the balance beam. So against her two biggest rivals, she has had her two best scores on individual events. Dismounting Gainer Pike. That's five very good routines for Cal. Locked in. They still have one more to go. Tony Ann Williams is ranked 20th in the nation in the all-around. So she's going to have something to say about that as well. So Maya Washington and Haley Burleson need to be clutch here for Washington. They made their choice and said, we want to start on floor. Now they can't let this meet get away from them early. They need two scores well above 9-8 here. Maya is a dynamic gymnast. She's got the big tumbling, but she has an aggressive performance. Has a couple of wins this year. has gone 9-9 five times. You can just see every single pose that she does has a fierce position to it. Front layout, front fold dancing right out of it. Most of the season, nine meets. She wasn't just on floor, she was also in the bars and beam lineup. But the last two meets, she's only been on floor, and today, only scheduled on floor. Well, this dismount, she didn't quite get her arms all the way up, but she did a great job of being aggressive into that pike position. That gave her enough rotation to come up with that clean landing. All three passes were solid. UCLA would be looking to drop the 9-8 of Anna Glenn. And here comes Pua to Pualani Hall. Ranked number seven in the country on the ball test. Three wins and always goes 9-8-5 or better. Little side hop. That'll be close. Remember, it does start from a 10.0, so the judges do not get to watch it in slow motion like we do. Nice position onto the table. Pretty good form in the air. She has to bend those knees to be ready for that front landing. And a very little deduction besides just that little side hop. So. So while UCLA celebrates its first rotation on vault, Utah has one more. Because of the trouble for Tess in the fall, Michaela Skinner must come through. Well, if you're a Red Rocks fan and you need somebody to come through, who better than Skinner, who loves to compete? Number 10 in the country on this event, five individual wins, and went 9-9-7-5 against Oregon State. Well, she hit the key part of her routine. She finishes combination right here. Toe hand, full twisting, double back. Got and it. that's what she's known for. Skinner is clutch. It's been so fun to watch her continue to work on her details, keep that difficulty in her gymnastics. When I say she's a fierce competitor, <laughs> I am not lying. So the 9775 is the low score right now for California on balance beam. Sophie Sionok can better that. She has been hot on this event in her last three. All of them have been better than 9875. She's won two meets. This has been a great rotation. They have some good momentum to score to beat. 775 and she was solid there. Clean landing on the 
Double stag ring. If she can erase Kiana George's 9775, the next lowest score is a 985. This is a dream start for California on the beam. That was a beautiful routine. You know, when we talked to Liz about this rotation, she said, you know what? We have not started on the balance beam. We're a great team, and we need practice as we go into the postseason. Well, that should be a little boost of confidence for this beam team. Trying to keep it all in perspective, Justin Howell says, I love that, but we've got three more rotations. Washington is in the same situation that Utah was moments ago. They need to drop that 9-6 of Roberson. And they have their best all-around gymnast up, Haley Burleson. Burleson has four wins on the floor. And in the last two meets, has gone back-to-back -back career highs, 9-9-2-5. Right person at the right time. Beautiful double pike. Talked about her being a very elegant gymnast. She brings that to all of the events. Combination work, one and a half twist, through to the double fall, beautiful form in the air. choreography throughout the middle portion of her routine and time to pick it back up she's got one more pass to go finishing two and a half twist that can be a challenging landing she stepped across but it worked with her choreography so Skinner came through for Utah on the bars. Sayonak came through for Cal on the beam. And Burleson comes through for Washington on the floor. We talked all about UCLA and Utah coming in, didn't we? And California just made a statement and said, don't sleep on the Golden Bears. And they lead after opening on beam. Something surprising always happens at the Pac-12 championships. We had it already. We'll get to that in a moment. But Utah expected to do well on bars. Had to rally late in this one. Michaela Skinner, after they dropped Tess and score 9-2-5, they needed Skinner to come through. Skinner always comes through. Did it in a big way. 9-9-2-5. Well, she is a fierce competitor. She has the difficulty. She has the details. But somehow, she always knows how to stick the landings. A 9-9-2-5 for Skinner gives them a 49-3. Their second for Tom Barton, the co-head coach of Utah. Sammy, that's got to make him happy, isn't it? Tom, you said yesterday that if you stuck at least 50% of the dismounts on bars, you'd feel on track to win pac 12 Did they meet your expectations on bars? You no, know, on bars, they were good. They, they stuck uh, five out of six. We're happy with that. Obviously, Kim had a little hiccup, but missed a release. Would have liked to have that one in the bank. Uh, but I feel that they came out and they were aggressive and determined on the first event, which was good. What's the key for them on beam? You know, it's an intricate event. We really want them to relax and kind of get in a rhythm. So that's going to be important for them. And then, then of course, sticking. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. So California on the beam goes 49-4. Sophie Salnock and Tony Ann Williams. Well, and Galarzo, too. They went 9-9 three times in a row to close it out. That 49-4 is a program record for California on the balance beam. It's better than a dream start for California. In all the years of California gymnastics, that is the best beam rotation they've ever had, and it came at the Pac-12 Gymnastics Championships in the very first rotation. Tony Ann Williams says, 9-9, you ain't seen nothing yet. California, the fastest improving team in collegiate gymnastics, from nowhere to the center ring at the Pac-12s. Williams. This is the play. 
to see if you can pull an upset. You double A out right off the top here. Once again, just showing off this floor routine. I love it. Front layout, no problem there. Double pike. Great ending. Tony Ann. Love it. The Cal Bears have defeated Utah for just the second time ever. Tony Ann Williams is an Olympian. She was the 2016 Pac-12 floor champion, a regional champion on vault the year before that. 2015, the Pac-12 freshman of the year. She has over 65 wins in her career, actually up to 73 wins total now. But I'm telling you that that floor routine against Utah, coming out of nowhere to go 9-9-7-5 and beat the number two team in the country is one that she will always remember and be proud of. And a boost of confidence for this team as she pep talks them for their floor rotation. Meantime, Washington here in the second rotation will try to rally on the vault. They had a 49-175, so they're right in this thing, but they were fourth after one rotation. That's Kristen Hoffa there, had a 9-8-5 on floor. And this statistically would be Washington's weakest event, ranked just 22nd. Hoffa does have a win on the vault and has back-to-back -back career highs, which are 985. When they I, would take that right here. When I talked to the coaches, they said it's going to come down to landings. They've got to be clean, start to finish. That's a difficult vault. Uh, your Chanko Arabian. It's a blind landing, so it can be challenging to land. It does start from a 995, so it was a clean start. They're going to have to be even tighter on those landings. Here's Nia Dennis, who also led out for UCLA in the first rotation on vault. She has been outstanding on bars this year. Ten of her 11 routines have gone at least 9-8. She won a meet. And her career high, the 9925. Well, that came against Utah. Well, she is a powerhouse of a gymnast. High flying release right here at the top of the routine. Directly connected back to that bail handstand. All that's left is the dismount. She needs a good takeoff. Drop it in for the landing. A little off balance, but that's a great way to start. It's Chris Waller, the associate head coach. Well, this was a beautiful routine throughout. There's the dismount double layout. Little lean back on those heels, stepping right into the salute to the judges. But she was clean, start to finish. Utah in the second rotation is on the beam. They are number eight in the nation on this event, but they're coming off a season high against Georgia, 49-525. And Maddie Stover back in the leadoff spot for the Red Rocks. Little balance check there on the front aerial. She uses that in combination, so she's going to have to repeat it. She seemed uh, amused and annoyed by that early balance check. Maddie Stover was born on the beam. Nice recovery there. She has such a confident presence in her choreography. Nice posture, sharp arm movements. Oh. Nice save there, that right foot completely slipping when she landed. She has been through so much in her career. She was the lead off as a freshman on balance beam at the NCAA Finals, has battled through injuries, and she's still not 100% physically. Yet the smile never leaves, and the scores keep coming. And she has loved every minute of her gymnastics career. You can see it in her body language. Megan Marsden understands the sacrifice that gymnasts have to make. Watch this. Look at this right foot. Completely drifts off the beam. That is not easy to do. That means she had complete pressure in that left leg, too. Otherwise, it would have dropped to the floor real quick. Megan Marsden is a gymnast, part of all of Utah's record 10 national titles and twice an all-around individual champion. California is on the floor, and Sophie Seilnock leads off. 
combination. Front layout, front one and a half. Beautiful form and a clean landing. Sophie has won a four rotation this year, always hovering right about that 9-8 level. One thing Cal's really improved on is being able to have the depth in this specific event. When we were talking to them about their lineup, they said, well, we have eight or nine athletes, we warm them up, we see who feels the best, and then we decide what six are competing. Another combination pass. Finishing with that split jump front tuck. California rallied to beat Utah. They put up a 197.5. Highest score in Cal history. The top six scores in California history have all come under Justin and Liz Howell. All six of them. <laughs> Little personality blowing a kiss there at the end. She just came off the beam as their anchor. She scored a 9-9 there, brought it right over to the floor exercise, put up a clean routine. Monica Riley got a 9-8, so a decent start for Washington on what admittedly is not their best event. Haley Roy, second. Haley Roy, right around 9-8 and over all season long, holds on to the landing. Another difficult vault. It's not just the front landing that's hard about that one. She's got to get enough power and speed to come into the table. It's a front entry. It's also difficult to keep the legs glued together, so that can be something the judges spot. It's pretty quick motion. They do not get to see it in the slow motion like we do. 9.85 for Nia Dennis. Two years ago at the Pac-12 Championships, Janae Honest won this event, the uneven bars. She is one of seven former winners in this meet. Beautiful handstand to start the routine. Something Janae's worked really hard on is her details on this event, hitting those cast handstands. Combination work to the straddle back handstand. Right here is where she needs to stay clean. Sometimes she gets a little loose in her knees and her feet flinching on these giants. And the dismount, it's clean. It lasted less than a minute. That's her entire program. She is a bar specialist. This release move to Kotcheb, you'll see. Her knees and feet are always a question there. She was a little close to the bar, but boy, did she regroup. She hit every single handstand. That's one of the best dismounts I've seen her do this season. Maddie Stover, 9775. Here comes McKenna Merrill Giles, who had a 9.85 on bars in the opening rotation. Solid lead pass. You'll see her talk herself through this routine. Word for word, as she steps all the way to the end of the beam, she has a triple series, three skills down the beam. Two back handsprings layout, step out. Perfection. All American on this event. Her two top scores this year 9925, twice at UCLA and against Georgia. Front aerial. That meet against Georgia, by the way, 198 150. That's their season high. At the beginning of the season, we saw her warming up, and you could just sense something different in her level of confidence. It's shown through the, throughout the entire season. Becoming one of their strongest all-arounders. She sets up for the dismount, dismounting directly towards former teammate Bailey Rowe. Double twist. Four all-arounders for the Red Rocks, and by the way, Utah has produced the last four all-around champions at the Pac-12 Championships. Michaela Skinner last year, Brianna Hughes the year before, 
Before that, it was Georgia DeBritz, who's now working on radio tonight here. And back in 2014, the great Tori Wilson. And if you remember in 2012, two years prior to that, Corey Lothrop. We love seeing the alum. Once again to the floor in California's Ariana Robinson. Her music is from Wonder Woman. And she brings the same type of tumbling, unique passes right here. Lots of difficulty. Round off, double Arabian. Feet bounced a little bit, but that was pretty close to a stick. Another dependable performer. Always delivers something nine, eight or above on floor. Combination, one and a half pike front. Earlier in the season, I, I let out a secret saying if I could perform again, I might want to perform to Wonder Woman also. <laughs> Every little girl superhero. I actually caught part of that film this week and I understand now. She finishes with a round off double pike. You see that pass done from around by handspring. She's got to get enough speed and power on that round off. And she holds on to the landing. Ariana Robinson, a senior from Virginia. Back to back nine eights for Washington on the ball. Jocelyn Goings for the first time tonight. Is only been in this lineup the last two meets. Did put up a 9-8-2-5 against Davis and Seattle Pacific. Oh, that's going to be a yeah. good score. Loves it. Yeah, she knows that's going to be good. <laughs> you know, and sometimes coaches go with warm-ups. Sometimes they go with their gut. Well, this was a great choice. Look at that form in the air, but this is what made it stand out. That landing arms in place, and those feet didn't move. Ralph Rosso, assistant coach in the pit there. Looked almost as surprised as Jocelyn did. As Elise Ray stats, last year's Pac-12 Coach of the Year. 9-9 for Janae Honest. So nice pinch hit by Janae Honest, stepping up for the Bruins. Sonia Mraz. Combination down to the low bar. And then she comes back up to her major release. It happens right here. Nice handstand. Good position. Great turnover. Oh, wow. Fighting great for save. It, holding I can on. see that coming. Double layout. She had a few execution errors right there at the final part of her team. That cast handstand and the hop back. Nine eight seven five for Merrill Giles. Now for the first time tonight, Alexia Birch, part of the U.S. Junior Olympic National Team. She's been out of the beam lineup for a few weeks, I believe nursing a sore knee. Her best score on beam came here at McHale Center in that dual meet against the Gym Cats, a nine nine. Being a freshman, that was only the second beam routine of her career. Confident landing on that back handspring layout and then fluid movement right out into the choreography. Oh no! Front aerial, such an easy skill for her. She fell. Remember, a fall is 5'10". She also loses that element, which can affect the start value. Six athletes up. This is going to be the routine they want to drop. Dismounting round up, one and a half twist. Front aerial, you know, this is a skill that is dead on or lax. She pulled the chin a little bit 
Anytime you pull the chin on a front skill like that, watch her right foot as it lands, goes sideways. And then, of course, it's four inches wide. It does not take that much to knock you off. Of course, getting a pep talk from the coaches. But this Utah team has to rally. They've done it before. They can do it again. Well, they'll have Lee Reinstadler and Skinner to finish off the rotation. Keanu George back on the floor. George was part of that beam lineup and put up a, a, a respectable 9-7-7-5, but Cal was so good they dropped that score. Another 9-8-plus producer in nine meets this year. Strong front double full. California led after the first rotation with a 49-4 opener on beam. Trying to protect it now on floor. Wow, stunning lead pass. Justin Howell, head coach in the background. To tell which one he is, he's the one applauding. Pep talking her for the second tumbling pass. Front through to one and a half twist. She's made some changes to her tumbling. When we talk to the coaches about this team and ask them what's been the difference at the back part of the season, you guys finally getting into your group. Well, some of it was getting injured athletes back into the lineup. Some of it were was freshmen like her gaining confidence in their performance. But it's also been adjusting the gymnastics to get the best results. She finishes from one and a half twist. She's gonna like that routine. The problem for California early in the year was slow starts. They had a bunch of falls in the early rotations. They could never put together, not only a 24 for 24, they couldn't put together a, a six for six. Well, some of that was because they didn't perform in front of their home crowd until February. Look at these That's leaps, right. the height, and look at, she overextends the 180. That is beautiful. When you're powerful and you can do big gymnastics and then you throw in leaps and jumps like that, uh, amazing. Yeah, it's a good point. You brought up the first four meets for California on the road. Here's Kristen Hoffa. Kristen Hoffa had a 985 on floor for Washington in the first rotation. She has a win on vault this year and has gone back to back career highs 985. Wow. Hold on to it. They're going to like that one. You know, I think we talk about the energy in this arena. <laughs> one team puts up a big routine, the energy picks up, the next team does it, and they feed off of it. This should be one of their best scores. Nice position in the air, great distance, and then fights for that landing. Her feet are a little bit wide on that landing, so that's one of those elements the judges have to decide if they're going to take a deduction for. I'm just loving the attitude of California and Washington, who knew everybody was talking about Utah and UCLA, including us coming in. And they simply said, what about us? Kaylin Ahashi. Combination work. Her major release coming right here. To Pacha. Little short on that final handstand. She has a sore ankle. Double layout. Oh! Came off early. Well, we're going to see her again. That's not even her best event. Her best event is actually the floor, and she's she's not penciled into the lineup, although that could change. We should see her on the balance beam where she's ranked number three in the nation. So here's where the rally comes for Utah again in this rotation. No room for error on the balance beam. Kari Lee. She is beautiful on this event. She needs to stay right in the moment. Right often the most difficult part on the balance beam is when a teammate does have a mistake, you cannot let that stand at the back of your head. You gotta block it out and do the routine that you practice every day in the gym. Back handspring layout, step out. She looks completely crooked on the back handspring, but adjusted well, fought through. Gary Lee has won twice this year on the beam. It's 
see in the background, that's Bailey Rowe, who's a volunteer assistant coach and former gymnast, of course, at Utah. Red Rocks fans enjoyed her for four years. Last year, she was in this meet and finished second in the all-around. Beautiful double fold to finish that routine. When we saw Bailey at the beginning of the season, I said, do you miss it? And she said, well, standing on the sidelines is way more difficult than being in it. <laughs> she said, my hands are sweating. It's hard standing back, and especially hard for these coaches who watch their athletes work so hard. She understands what the, the co-head coaches, Tom Farden and Megan Marsden, are going through. Back-to-back 9825s -back on floor. Sylvie Sylnock. There are two Sylnocks, of course, on the Cal roster, Sophie and Sylvie. Juniors from the Bay Area, stays in. Big step back, but have room. score is a 9825. She's hit that three times this year, including her last two meets. And she's got a chance here for a season high because she's pretty clean. Got her head coach right behind her. Got her teammates out front. Combination. Front one and a half twist, a little off balance on that final split jump. Golden Bears trying to hold on to the lead they built on balance beam. Bullpen eating it up. 9775 for Hoffa. Madison Kopiak now. Two more to go for Washington on the vault. And they're trying to rally. They were fourth after the first rotation. She's coming off a season high, 9875. Little for forward on that yep. landing. Tiptoed out of the landing. Just a 965 for Ohashi. Here comes Peng Peng Lee. This bar routine will keep you on the edge of your seat. She's got the high flying release moves and not just one, multiple. Number nine in college gymnastics. She's won three times. She had a 10 at Stanford. Right there is the first one. She regroups, sets up, down to the low bar, full twisting pack, salto. Wow. We've watched her do this bar routine over and over. Nearly perfect. When she caught that release, she crumbled down to her hips. Talk about how strong she is to not come off the equipment. Finishing double layout, hot back. Ugh. Here's where the problem happened. Watch as she catches. She's not able to push back. She comes right to her hips. Glide kips up. You know, that's a questionable deduction. I know for me as an athlete, when I made a mistake like that, she I didn't want that? to touch. Yes, yeah, she got too far over the bar. She, she didn't want to touch the mat, so she just regrouped, and she's incredibly strong. Unfortunately for UCLA, Ohashi had just got 9.65, so they're going to have to count a low score. Utah is trying to avoid that. Kari Lee went 9.875. Missy Ryan Statler and Michaela Skinner to finish off the rotation on beam for the Red Rocks. And because of the score to Alexia Birch, the 915, Stover's 9775 will be included. So Utah has some repair work to do here as well. Well, solid start for Missy as she sends up for her tumbling pass. 
that hip spring layout. Step out, holds up perfectly into that lunge. Ryan Statler had a 9-9 on bars. Dropping that right arm, but I'm pretty confident she still got the connection. Finishing. Carwell Gainer full. You know, Utah and UCLA came in as the heavy favorites for this competition, and it looks like they have a little added pressure on their shoulders. They need to relax because these are two amazing teams that are making uncharacteristically uncharacteristic mistakes. Meantime, California continues to sail along. They want to bump their score here on floor. Alicia Galarzo. Alicia also had a 9-9 in the first rotation. First came on beam. for Alicia on balance beam is not a career high. She had a 9.925 at last year's Pac-12 championships on beam. Coming right back, double tuck. A little double step there on that landing. Alicia Galarzo, the senior from, from Burbank outside of Los Angeles, where as a club gymnast, she performed for, for Chris Waller, who's the associate head coach for UCLA. So you wonder if he's peeking from across the room somewhere. Well, this Cal floor team doesn't have the level of difficulty we'll see from some of the other athletes, but their execution has been very strong. Scores have dropped off since those early 9.8s and 9.9s. And once again, Washington asks Haley Burleson to pick it up. Anchor spot on the ball. There you go. There it is. She has consistently come through for this team. You look at her and you think she's not going to be a powerhouse, but that is a big fault. Nice amplitude, good form, and most importantly, she landed it perfect. She's won four times on the vault this year. So that's the story for UCLA. They're going to drop the 9-4, have to count the 9-6-5. And they're not out of the woods yet. Kyla Ross is usually pretty dependable, but so is Peng Peng Lee. So I'm not counting anything until it's over. A beautiful combination work. Her technique is stunning on this event. Nailing that final handstand. The current NCAA champion on this event, ranked number two in the country. Chris Waller with a high five. Well, those releases, beautiful. The crowd up on their feet, and for good reason. She needed to pull out a big routine right there, and that was it. Unfortunately for UCLA, the same thing that happened last year has happened again. They failed to perform on bars. Now here's Michaela Skinner for Utah. Second straight rotation in which Skinner has been on the anchor and they had to have a score. It happened on bars in the first rotation, and she came through. Back handspring layout, step out, aggressive into the landing. She had a 9.925 on bars. That's the high score in the meet. Yeah. 
She has a quick pace to this routine. She's known for floor and fault, but she brings that aggressiveness to the balance beam, and that's her style. That's what works. This combination new this season, connecting her lead pass, switch lead straddle jump right to that back tuck. Huge amplitude oh, landing with that chest up. You saw her. She yelled out a yes. She finishes this routine with a difficult dismount. Showing off to you, to the Red Rocks fans who have made the trip. And now just the dismount. Round up double tap. Trying to rescue the rotation for the Red Rocks. Wow. That is great news because they had that 915 still in that rotation. That just bailed them out. This is difficult. It's risky to land, but you know what? I've watched Michaela Skinner do that dismount and hit it like that time after time. She's got, like I mentioned earlier, some of the most difficult gymnastics, but it's her fierce competitiveness that makes her so incredible. Now, for Cal, Tony Ann Williams. Tony Ann Williams, another big name. Trying to pick up the pace from the anchor spot. Strangely, the floor has been California's weakest event statistically, but they're still in the top 20. Big first pass, double layout. And of course, they did put up that 49-525 to beat Utah. Was the fourth highest floor total in school history. Everything about this floor routine is big amplitude. From the tumbling to that lead pass to the personality right to us. <laughs> Combination front layout, front full. to finish. She's dancing around the arena. It's not California's best event, and they will have to count a couple of scores under 9-8. That one's going to help, though. That should be a solid score for them. California led after one, but Utah and Washington rally. Utah went 49-25. Michaela Skinner just put up a 9-9 to close out beam. Washington goes 49-150 in their vault rotation. It's those sevens in the middle that held their score down, so Washington is still in fourth, but Haley Burleson comes through in the anchor spot with a 9-8-7-5. Let's go back and look at Jocelyn Goings with the 9-9. That was the best score in the group. Well, you mentioned it. She has not been in this vault lineup all season, but it paid off today. Beautiful form, height, legs glued together on the full twist, and this was key. She stuck the landing. The Gym Dogs have a different attitude since Elise Ray Stats came on campus a couple years ago. 2017 Pac-12 Coach of the Year is with Sam. Elise, Washington has been so consistent all season and especially on the first two events. What's been clicking with this team? It's a really cohesive group um, and they want it really badly. So we just talk about focusing on one event at a time, really staying in a bubble, not paying attention to anyone else but ourselves. Um, and because they have a, such a strong bond together, they just cohesively go after those goals. What's the focus on bars to keep that consistency going? We want to step it up a notch on these last two events. Um, bars is one of their favorites, and we've been getting better and better in the season. So just let it swing, you know, right? Not try too hard, not be too tight, but just let it go. Thanks, Lise. Yeah, this year, Washington has gone 197 plus four different times. They haven't accomplished that since 2004. And they're coming off a season high 197-4 against Seattle Pacific and UC Davis. Here's our totals now. And look at that. 
Utah has gone back in front. Utah just went 49-2-5 on the beam. Michaela Skinner finished with that 9-9, and prior to that, Ryan Statler 9-8-2-5. Kari Lee had the 9-8-7-5. Amanda, two times in a row, Utah has been pressed midway through the rotation. Somehow they pulled it out. Can they keep doing it? <laughs> well, the good news is with Michaela Skinner in, in the anger, it definitely gives this team confidence, but they're deep. They got a rally, and the best news is they're going to their two powerhouse events. California gets through the floor. They're still in second. That's not their best event. UCLA falls to third with a 49-1-5. Kyla Ross at a 9-9-7-5. So UCLA circles the wagons now. Miss Val says, we're going to beam. This has been a good event for us this year. UCLA is ranked number two in the nation on this event. They have three gymnasts ranked in the top five on balance beam. They've gone 49-4 in their last nine meets. They've gone 49 plus in 24 straight meets. UCLA stumbled on the bars, usually one of its better events. And now they have to play catch up. Currently sitting third. UCLA a 98-425 total behind the 98-55 Utah. So more than a tenth behind right now, but we're only halfway through. Utah, the defending champions, they've won this Pac-12 championship three times. California has never won it, but they have been a second runner-up a couple of years ago when they hosted, remember, as a host, they got to say, we want to go in the night session, even though they hadn't earned it during the regular season. And a lot of people criticized them. Justin Howell said, we're that good. They ended up third that year. He was right. Opening with the clean, layout full. It's Cassidy Keelan. The key on this event is just to do their vaults, but stay as clean as possible on those landings. Save every tenth they can on the vault. Cassidy Keelan had a 9.85 earlier on the balance beam, so she's done her job for the Golden Bears. Washington goes to the bars here in the third rotation. 15th in the country on this event. They have four gymnasts who average better than a 9.8. Michaela Nelson first. Opening release combination, Jaeger way above the bar. Nice position on the catch, swinging right back to that handstand. Pat Salto. Finishing with the combination, giant full. Double tuck. Wow, she opened that up with plenty of time so that that landing came straight down and just sat. Great start. Another good effort from Kayla Nelson. Remember, she opened the meet on floor for Washington with a 9.825. Well, if UCLA is going to rally, it's got to start here on the balance beam. Grace Glenn. She is number five in the nation on balance beam. Two wins and eight of her nine have been at least 9.875. Starting back there, bringing way out, step out. UCLA known to adjust their lineups. I think when it's come to balance beam, we've seen a variety of different lineups for them to figure out the best rhythm possible. They have many athletes in this lineup that can score those 9.9s. Nine and when we talked about earlier in the season, she said, hey, my leadoff hasn't doesn't just have to be a hit routine. We're looking for the leadoff to set a tone of a 9-9 on this event. UCLA won the balance beam at last year's Pac-12 championships. Unique combination, turn right into that. Flexibility and dismounting back handspring. Gainer layup full off the side. Gracie's done it again. That was a great start. Utah, your current leader. And they go to one of their favorite events, the floor. Utah won the floor at the Pac-12s last year. They're currently ranked fourth in the country. <laughs> Tiffany Lewis led off on bars to start the meet with a 9.85. This is a high energy routine. Tiffany has a lot of difficulty. 
salty as well. But they put her up first to really create the energy this team, this team needs on this event. Huge double pike. Tiffany Lewis has dominated this event at this meet in the past. Two years ago, 2016, Pac-12 champion on the floor. Finishing with that front fall. I dare you not to clap, Amanda. <laughs> Can't do it. Well, in their arena, 15,000 people follow along with that clap. They have a pretty good cheering section here. She points to the team. That was their turn. Utah set an NCAA record for attendance this year, averaging 15,139. They sold better than 9,200 season tickets. 15,139 average. That's like an NBA team. <laughs> Finishing double tuck. Whoa. Stays in. Well, when she landed, she pulled her feet through a little bit. Wow. That was close. Anytime you pull your feet underneath, you lock those legs. It is very difficult to not just stay in bounds, but stay on your feet. This first tumbling pass, amplitude. She goes way up. Look at that, to the top of the screen, but opens up so she knows exactly where she's at on that landing. Kaylin with a 9825, opening vault for the Golden Bears. Once again, here's Alicia Galarzo. Galarzo had a 9-9 on beam and a 9.75 on floor. She has a win on vault this year. Your Chango Arabian, that blind landing, I talk about it a lot because it's more challenging to stick. That was pretty clean though. This gives you a great view. When she comes into the landing, she's actually looking at the ceiling. So right here, the mat's approaching, her eyes are on the ceiling. So to do a great vault like that, you have to have great body awareness air awareness to know where you're flying through the air to stay clean on that finish. 9825 for Michaela Nelson on bars. Jocelyn Goings. We saw Jocelyn with a 99. That was the best mark for Washington in the second rotation on vault. She's coming off a season high on bars. It was a 98. Nice Jaeger flip. We're short on some of these handstands. Showing a nice position there. So transition down to the low bar. Much better there. Finishing full twisting double back. Oh. Wow, it looked like she was coming in for a great landing. Maybe lifted her head a little bit. Kind of stalled her rotation. Take a big step forward there on that dismount. 9875 for Grace Glenn. And here's the Olympic gold medalist, Madison Koshin. Koshin is threatening to come back on bars, but we don't think we're going to see her here in bars just on beam tonight. She is also listed in the floor rotation, but I expect that to change a couple times before we actually see it. Solid front aerial to start the routine. Moving right into our series. Back into her layout step up. Maddie had shoulder surgery during the off season, so that's what's kept her out of that bar lineup. But when I talked to Val, she's swinging bars again. She has put most of her skills back together. She just needs a little more time to train it. little doubt in some of these landings, small balance checks. Dismounts with a double full. She needs that good takeoff position so she can drop it in for a landing. Very nice. Tiffany Lewis, 9725. Utah expects more than that from its four performers. 
by Kari Lee. Opens two and a half twist. Those twisting passes can be challenging to land. Nice job there. Earlier in the season, she did not compete this event. Yeah, this is only her seventh floor of the season. Well, I remember the coach is telling me she wants to be in the floor lineup so bad. Nice second tumbling pass there. They tried to hold her out just a little bit. Wanted to keep her legs fresh for the end of the season. Another top shelf gymnast who lost an entire season to an injury back in 2016 in Achilles. Talked about Zoe Schaefer had gone through that. Peng Peng Lee, two ACL surgeries in her career, and yet they're able to battle all the way back to compete at this level. It's inspiring. Finishing double fall, layout, step out. <laughs> Robert Ladney over there in his first season at Utah, and he's all about Red Rock Nation. Now you see him applauding, and there he is. <laughs> and he's bought in, hasn't he? <laughs> he was at Florida for a long time, a decade. Galarzo 9 8, so good scores for California. Now they need something bigger, and they turn to Sylvie Seilnock. Sylvie's been a little inconsistent on vault. Needs to hit one. That was solid, but this team's got to fight for those landings. I mean, she's got the amplitude and the height. When you get to watch it in slow motion, you can see what she needs to do right there is slow the rotation down enough that she can stay on the front side of that landing and let the momentum sit. Easier said than done, that's for sure. 9-7 for going, Sears Roberson. Washington was fourth after the first rotation and fourth after the second rotation. Actually had fallen a bit further behind, but a different leader. it out, double layout. Legs got just a little loose on that landing. But this team has great energy and momentum. And I'm a little surprised, Amanda, but I feel that the meat has dropped down into a little lull right now. Somebody needs to fire it up. Real win, a late substitution on the balance beam for UCLA. Bruins have a good rotation going with the 9875 and the 985. Real was the leadoff on beam for most of the season for UCLA. That's one of the small changes they made in this lineup. And this is her only event. her career at the University of Illinois, Champaign-Urbana, second team all Big Ten. Simple leap combination, switch leap to the split jump. She does a Split half, sideways on the beam. Very nice. Finishing front full. Oh, yes. That 
was a solid set for her. She started the season out with that routine in the leadoff. You know, she got a little rocky and maybe started doubting herself a little bit, but that's the routine they needed right now. Nine eight five for Kari Lee, so that bumps their number up in a hurry. Missy Reinstatler. Reinstatler had a nine nine on bars in the first rotation, and a nine eight two five on beam. She has a very dramatic routine. The music and the choreography match. such variety of styles on this Utah team and they really try to capture the personality and style that fits the best. Missy brings seriousness to her performance. Wow. Beautiful. One of the great events in collegiate athletics is a Utah home meet. And if you're lucky enough to find Utah needing a big floor to close it out with 15,000 plus on their feet, I suggest you take advantage of that opportunity. It's a blast. Combination. Her artistry on this event really stands out her extension in every movement she does and her technique on her tumbling is just gorgeous legs glued together on that double pike all the way through to the finish <laughs> and there's the not so serious side of her, she celebrates. It's one of my favorite things to watch collegiate gymnasts kind of get out of that club or elite mentality. Keanu George trying to stay in her bubble. Don't let him get to you. They didn't. <laughs> Good fault for her. They dropped George's score on beam but she came back with a 9825 on floor. This is gonna be in that neighborhood. Well, nice power, good position in the air, just that small slide of her feet on the landing. George is scheduled to go on bars in the five spot. That'd be their final rotation. So we should see her one more time. <laughs> Haley Burleson taking a moment to herself. 9775 for Roberson. Burleson's a threat in the all around. Combination to that Sakachev. We talked about her long line on the other events. She brings that to the uneven bars. It looks beautiful, but quite often it can make this event a little bit more challenging. You can see her swing pace is a little bit slower. She's got to be very technical to make sure she gets all the right positions like that. Giant pull right on top to a double top. And another great landing for her. We saw her nail her vault. She already has a 9.825 on floor, a 9.875 on vault. That may be her highest score so far. And she's going to close the meet on beam for Washington. 9.9 nine for Brielle Wynn. Here's Ohashi on the balance beam. Ohashi is ranked third in the nation, has won four times on the balance beam. Did not have a good experience on the bars. Front aerial. Canceling layout, step out. Looks like she started to wobble a little bit, but knew exactly what to do. Switch ring, very difficult skill on the balance beam. Anytime you take your eyes off of the beam, it makes it harder to regroup as you land. Part of the U.S. national team program for four years. Dismounting backhand spring layout. Directly 
to that full twist. And if it comes down to it for UCLA, she is anchoring the floor, which is also a great event for her. She's number two in the country on that event. She's playing today with a, a sprained ankle. Which actually happened here in Tucson. <laughs> We're giggling because she was running from a cockroach. It had nothing to do with gymnastics. Sydney Soloski up on floor for Utah. She is a huge first tumbling pass double layout. Good landing. Soloski during the year has been right around top 25 on this event nationally. Finishing combination. Back one and a half front layout. Freshman from Calgary. And talking about playing through injuries, she broke her nose in training a couple of weeks ago. And she didn't miss much time. Yeah, that's that's really impressive. She did a release move on bars and just kind of slipped a little bit. And you would have never known in her performance, though. Ariana Robinson, and this is one of those unique vaults that we see in this conference. Yeah, she does a front handspring onto the board. We see the round offs, we see forward entry. She does a front handspring, and then front handspring, front pike. Ah! Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> that is a difficult vault. It's hard to stick. I've seen her do that in practice. I have not seen her do it like that in competition for a long time. The judges have to reward this. <laughs> Man, this gives you great perspective. It's so unique. It's a front handspring. Front what? and basically multiple flips in the air there. Look, Look at, at Justin that. and Liz to the right. They react to it. They see it every day in training. And it does get much better than that one. Yes, it was better than okay. 9825 for Burleson, Madison Kopiak, and Monica Riley. Last two for Washington. because everything else was so good. Yeah, you know, it happened so fast. So for the judges, it's all about how much pressure into the feet, any form breaks along with it. Back-to-back 9-9s -back for UCLA. The low score is a 9-8-5, so Ahashi redeems herself. And here is Kyla Ross. Ross had a 9-9 on vault and a 9-9-7-5 on bars. She's your leader in the all-around. Tumbling pass first, backhand spring layout, step out. Switch ring, confident landing there. Kyla Ross is the reigning Pac-12 and NCAA champion on the balance beam. And covers a bit of a lean on the full turn. Nice 
front aerial. You know, the last couple meets, we've seen her balance check right there on that final element. She stayed patient and relaxed, finishing with that strong position. Side aerial, layout full. The best part about Kyla Ross's gymnastics right now is how much she's enjoying it. She has certainly paid her dad part of the Fierce Five, won a gold medal in London, and now she's just really enjoying her time at UCLA and being part of the team. Well, and that's the story for this young lady too, McKenna Merrill yes. Giles. When we talked to her at the beginning of the season, she said, you know what? I'm relaxing and I'm having fun doing my gymnastics. And I've always said that's when I was my best also because they train so much. Now, just relax and do what you've trained for, and that's show off this routine. Top 10 all season on this event. Big first tumbling pass. Full twisting, double back in that pike position. You can see your teammates in the background, and the crowd chants along, U-T-A-H. Combination here. Three flips and one pass. She's looking right up at the Utah fans and locked eyes with somebody she recognized. Finishing front one and a half straddle jump. Very nice routine. You get the feeling Utah wants this title? Well, you can feel, you said you felt a lull. I'm, I'm beginning to feel yeah. both teams putting up great gymnastics and the next team answering. Yeah, they're picking it back up now. <laughs> 9925 for Ariana Robinson. Here's Tony Ann Williams, who's a top three vaulter in California history. She's got the power. She needs a great landing, and that was it. Is Cal still in this thing? Well, you know what? They're not giving up, that's for sure. Tony Ann can do an upgraded vault. She can add a half twist, but she does this full twist with beautiful execution and can stay tight on that landing. So right now it's not worth the risk. That vault is capable of scoring into that 9-9 range. Well, the score they were looking to drop was Sylvie Sionox, 9-7-7-5. It's gonna do that, so that means their low score on vault is gonna be a 9-8. Meantime for Washington, their low score is going 9-7. That's up to Monica Riley to wipe off the board. Well, in the back part of the season, she has become the anchor on this event. She's been one of their highest scorers. Top 25 in the nation, four wins. And has eight straight bars routines at 9.85 or better. Came out a little early on that toe handstand. Up to the high bar, bringing it right back down. Solid. Strong handstand. She sets up for the dismount. Double layout. That, yes. That's why she's the anchor. Very nice work. Boy, Monica Riley comes through for the gym dogs. And they're not done yet. Nine nine two five for Kyla Ross. Look at the scores for UCLA. All of a sudden on beam, big rally by the Bruins. Their low score is at nine eight five, and now they have Peng Peng Lee on balance beam. She's number two in the country. She's won it eight times and has a great mount. Wow, <laughs> that is unbelievable. I was talking with some male gymnasts, and they said, you know what? Those are legit flares. You see, sometimes girls try one. That's three full. Flares and she doesn't have to do that mount, but it stands out and then she starts out right here. Big tumbling. 
Solid back handspring layout, two feet. Beam is the toughest for women. Palma horse the toughest for men. Peng Peng Lee combines the two. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Double turn, directly connected. We've seen many gymnasts this oh. weekend struggle with the full turn. So to add a difficult element in on that dance. Finishing side aerial. for UCLA. Their season high is a ridiculous 49.725. This is gonna challenge that. The Bruins are right back in this thing, and they're putting pressure on Utah, and look who's up last for Utah again. It's Michaela Skinner. How many times can you ask Supergirl to show up? <laughs> She's already saved them in two rotations, and now they're asking her to do it again. Well, this is the event she is known for. Tremendously difficult tumbling. The Pac-12 champion from last year in this event, last year's NCAA champion in this event. Four-time winner this year. Watch this first tumbling pass. Two flips, two twists. Double-double. She has plenty of space into the corner and nails it. Crowd reacting to the score on balance beam. And of course, we want to keep our focus here on Michaela Skinner. We'll get to it in a second. Combination pass, one and a half through to that double full. You have to remember, this Utah team knows how to handle loud crowds. They are used to it. score for Utah on floor, Tiffany Lewis, 9725. This is going to be better. Right here, full twisting double back. Oh, goodness. Oh, Michaela Skinner, stop it. You see most gymnasts open their routines <laughs> with the full in. This first tumbling pass, two flips, two twists. This is so difficult. You do not see many girls ever even train this, let alone compete it in college. And look at the landing. Effortless. Plenty of space into the corner. No problem at all. The Bruins have a smile on their face because moments ago, Peng Peng Lee just picked up her fourth perfect 10 of the year fifth of her career on balance beam and this is right after they saw it ucla's balance beam rotation 49 575 they are right back in it the pac-12 championships come down to the final rotation pac-12 championships go to the final rotation and not only is UCLA and Utah battling for it, but California is still in it. The Golden Bears with a 49-3 on the vault and got heavy at the back end with Ariana Robinson and Tony Ann Williams, both going 9-9 plus. Well, for Ariana, it's a unique vault, but this one was done better than I've seen her do in a long time. Look at the height, four legs glued in the air and then stuck the landing. Then Tony Ann came right back. She has an upgraded vault, but she can do this one almost perfect. And that's the score she got, a 9.9. .9. Sam Peshek is across the floor with Liz Crandall Hell, associate head coach of the Golden Bears. Liz, after a rocky start to the season, Cal seems to be peaking at the perfect time. What shifted for this team? Um, we really did not try to address the rough start too much other than saying, you belong, you know, with the best teams in the country, and you have the talent and the ability to do it, and you've worked really, really hard. Stop trying to be perfect and just be aggressive, and the gymnastics will come. Cal is obviously still in the running to become the Pac-12 champions. What's been the message to this team? Again, we just reminded them 
that they belong with the best and that they have the capability and the talent to go wherever they want to and the only limits are from themselves. And so I think that their confidence, especially coming back from adversity, has built their confidence even more than if they had started perfectly. Thanks, Liz. You're welcome. She is dead on. The Golden Bears, two best meets this year against UCLA, where they gave the Bruins all they wanted before falling late. And then Utah, where they came back in the final rotation and upset the Red Rocks. So look at this now. UCLA, after going 49-5-7-5 in the third rotation on balance beam, 49-6 actually now, 49-6 officially, is 148-025. They are now leading. 0.150 difference between the Bruins and the Red Rocks. And California is back 0.250. How much more do you want? We go to the final rotation. Bruins will close on the floor. Well, this one's easy, isn't it? Our State Farm get to a better state. How about perfection? Again for Peng Peng Lee. Well, she showcases right unique tumbling. elements like that. That mount, big Stop. tumbling. Val says it best. She surfs the beam, and once again, she did it again. Perfection 10.0. That really picked up great momentum as they head into one of their best events, the floor exercise next. It's her eighth perfect 10 in her career. Fifth on the balance beam. She has three on the uneven bars. UCLA had 10 perfect 10s last year. They have 10 perfect 10s again this year. I believe it's 125 in their careers. That's all time for UCLA, amazing. Utah is gonna close on the vault. They are back point 150. Ryan Statler, Lee, Lewis, Tesson, Merrill Giles, and there's Michaela Skinner again, waiting in the wings to save the Red Rocks. UCLA and Utah, a great rivalry. They met in January in Reno. UCLA won, they met in Westwood in February. The Red Rocks won. Big vault. Utah has got to be clean on these first three vaults. They start from 995, so these landings mean everything. The back three, Athletes all start from a 10.0, so this could be a great rotation for them to end on. California finishes on the bars, so California is waiting for both Utah and UCLA to open the door just a little bit. They begin the last rotation behind by .250. It's a big lead, but it's not insurmountable. Eileen Sternberg, first time today, steps to the bars. Nice combination. Good control on the catch. She struggled on this event early in the season, but has really found herself mid-season. Well, one of the reasons was the dismount she was doing, so they made a change. I mentioned that earlier. You gotta play smart, and this is the chain. Giant full, right to that double tuck. She's able to put up a clean, consistent landing week after week, and that's what you need in that leadoff spot. Washington had its choice whether they wanted to start on beam or floor. They pick floor, which means they finish on beam. Well, they find themselves down. Fourth place going into the fourth rotation and having to rally on the toughest event. Only for the Gym Dogs, this is one of their better events. Seventh in the nation. This is Mallory Rose. Starting with that unique jump to the splits. She's been in this leadoff position before. Confident for an aerial back handspring. When we talked to Elise Ray about her rotation order, I mentioned she feels like she was strong on floor and beam and she wanted to end right here. But one thing she mentioned was that this team has ended a lot of their competitions on the balance beam, so they're gonna handle it just like a dual meet, finishing on the beam. There, a little shoulder dip on the left side, but was able to regroup. Dismounting with that side aerial again. To the tuck full, small step with that right foot. Good routine to start the rotation. UCLA finishes on the floor and opens with Maddie Koshin. 
The Bruins leading by .150. They need five big scores, because you know Utah's coming. Front double full. Koshin rejoined the floor lineup four meets ago. Combination second tumbling pass, one and a half front layout. Miss Val, right there keeping a close eye on Koshin. Such a nice light style to this choreography and it really matches her personality. Mosette, former UCLA star. She's helped a lot of the athletes with their floor routines, doing the choreography. Finishing a little off balance there. She did that front one and a half twist and was doing a jump out. It looked like she didn't quite get enough push out of the one leg. So not a great opener by Koshin in UCLA. And the Utah fans sense a little hope. 9-8 by Ryan Statler, Kari Lee. Kari Lee has gone 9-9 on vault three times this year. You can see that power. They're stepping backwards out of their vaults. We said this earlier in the season. These are some of the strongest vaults you'll see. But they gotta be able to control the power. Beautiful technique in the air. There again, that deduction on the landing. 975 for Sternberg. Here's Tony Ann Williams. Tony Ann tonight, a 9-9 on beam, a 9-9 on floor, a 9-9 on vault. She's so boring. It's always the same. Well, watch this. It's not boring. Look at that release. High flying, aggressive swing. Right, quickly to that handstand, nailing it. Straight up and down. Beautiful. Dismount. Hold it. <laughs> she is so much fun. Well, this release move, not easy to do from that carrot position, but look how high she gets. That incredible distance, and then she controls it out and nails the handstand. She's known for that high-flying floor tumbling and vault, <laughs> but she brings it to the bars, and it's exciting to watch. And note for that smile as well. It's always there. Zoe Schaefer on beam for UW. Front aerial as she sets up her tumbling series. Backhand spring layout step out. That back foot completely turned sideways, but that didn't seem to phase her. Split jump to that double stag ring. The judge is looking for that back foot to make it up to head height. One and a half twist, wow. She was confident, she knew she was there. Arms out, ready for that landing. Nice work by Zoe Schaefer. So he had a 9825 on floor to start the meet. 9825 for Koshin. I think UCLA is happy with that score. Gracie Kramer. 
only event tonight for Gracie. She had a 9.95 against Oregon State. She's had three 9.9s. Starts the routine with a combination. Front double full, front tuck. Oh, was running out of space and went vertical. Well, that's been one of the struggles is staying in bounds. She almost had her arms ready to say, no way. Coming back combination. Amanda, I know you're thinking about it. So are all Utah fans and UCLA fans. Last time it came down to this, UCLA on the floor against Utah. Three Bruins went out of bounds and scuttled the meet. The Red Rocks came back and won it in Westwood. Finishing front one and a half straddle jump. Gracie Kramer, who's been sitting on the bench for better than two hours, is asked to come in and produce. That was one of the best routines I've seen her do this season. She is a powerful gymnast, but her struggle has been staying in bounds. She left plenty of room on many of those passes to guarantee no out-of-bounds deductions. 9-8, 9-8, good scores for Utah, but they're gonna need more than that. Tiffany Lewis, Utah's gotta start putting up some high 9-8s and low 9-9s. They have some room to make up, and they're running out of time. The defending Pac-12 co-champion on this event. It's big. That's a great vault. That could be the turning point. The next three vaulters have those 10-0 star values. Look at the height, straight up off the table, quick off her hands. She does a great job of opening her arms. And just that left foot. I wanted to see it in slow motion. I couldn't tell at first if it was a step. It looks like half a step to regain that balance. Nine eight five for Tony Ann. Alma Cook, only time we're going to see Alma tonight. Oh, no. Wow, her opening element. Looks like she didn't get her feet on the bar. So now she has to regroup and start the whole routine over. She'll probably repeat that element because she didn't even complete it. Right there to the release move. Back down with the pack salto. Bar specialist has two wins this year. Full twisting double back above the bar. Landed with that chest down just a little bit. Chest forward. That's the first major mistake from this Cal team. Yeah, this was an easy move, but right here she doesn't get her feet all the way on the bar. You could see her toes never made full pressure and that was a smart decision because if you don't get the bottom of that swing that release move is over before it's even started back to back nine eights for rose and schaefer madison kopiak kopiak coming off a nine seven on vault and a nine eight five on bars been a good event for her. They have a good thing going so far in this rotation. Two nine eights, they need to just stay in that rhythm. I can't spring layout, step out, beautiful. Big switch half. A little slow on the connection, but looked like she was regrouping a little bit between the landings.
solid side aerial. Dismounting one and a half twist. They've come into this vent confident knowing it's strong and it's showing up. 9.85 for Kramer. Kyla Ross needs better than a 9.825 to keep UCLA in front. And watching Peng Peng get that 10 on beam reminded me of last year when Kyla Ross got a 10 on beam at the Pac-12 Championships. Again, needs 9.825 or better to keep UCLA in front of Utah. Big whip, immediate double tuck. Season high is at 9-9. She's done it three times. But all eight of her floors have been at least 9-8-7-5. That's just what the Bruins need now. Aggressively pass right into that corner. Combination. One and a half twist front layout. Showed great control on that landing. The two cheering sections are sitting side by side. It's easy to tell which is which. Moving right into the corner. Foul on her right shoulder, team on her left. Yeah! Is that any good? <laughs> Feet together on that landing, showing she didn't need to take the step. And there's Jordan Weber, former Olympic gold medalist, teammate of Kyla Ross on the Fierce Five, first one to greet her. Nine nine for Tiffany Lewis. That's what they needed. Utah needs to go nine nine pluses all the way through now. Kim Tesson performs Yurchenko layout one and a half twist. Her nickname, Kim Possible. But that might do it. Here they come. There's one and a half twist. They're risky. But that 10 0 star value, if you can land it consistently, becomes worth it. Right here. That extra half twist makes the landing so much more challenging. She does a great job, though, knowing where she's at and able to slide those feet together. Very little deduction on that landing. Legs glued together. Remember, in the opening rotation, she struggled on bars. So, what a great way to finish her first Pac 12 championship. And the first of three consecutive vaults for Utah with a 10 0 start value. Nina Shank trying to get Cal back on track. They want to drop Cook's score. They need to go three for three. California was third, but within striking distance. Release combination. Giant blind. The Jaeger directly connected down. Nice rhythm. Good control. Double layout. <laughs> That's what they needed. We talk about it all too often. When there is a mistake in the lineup, that next person up, there is a lot of pressure to regroup and re-pick up the pace. That was a solid routine for Nina. Pretty good beam rotation going on for the gym dogs. 9-8, 9-8, for Kopiak, and here's Goings. Three times this year, Jocelyn has gone 9-9 on the beam. Triple series, two back handsprings to lay out, step out. So aggressive, quick pace tumbling. Flex 
responsibility over spending the straddle position. fighting for every tent there. She was a little leaned, but locked in at that lean position, so the judges yeah, no may balance, not take Jeff. a deduction. Yep. Popular combination there at the dismount again. Nailing that full twist. It's become popular because the full twist is much easier to stick than some of the other dismounts we see on that event. 9875 for Ross, so she keeps her string alive every floor the entire year. 9875 or more. Paulina Trotz. Remember that we haven't seen Trotz since the opening rotation on vault. She had a 9825. This is her better event. Trotz is ranked 24th in the country and has won the floor twice. Huge full in to start the routine. A 2016 Olympic alternate for the German national team. You see so much personality in this choreography. Every routine has a meaning to them. Brings the choreography to life. Back one and a half front full. Looked effortless into that landing. Tucson, keep the clap going. Back to back 9 nines for Lewis. So, right on cue, when we said they had to start going 9 9, they do it. McKenna Merrill Giles trying to keep the Red Rocks' hopes alive. Three time and defending champions in the Pac 12 Conference. Another one and a half. There you go. Red Rocks on fire. We've seen her get a perfect 10 on this vault. Again, she's gotta be technical. Just like that near, spots the ground, arms are ready, and comes in for a great landing. You can see that head stay over the left shoulder. That gives her a chance to spot the ground so she can make any adjustments needed to come in clean on that landing. 985 for Nina Shank. George mounting the bars for Cal. Starting right off with her Tkachev. Very nice. Aggressive swing down to that bail handstand. All that's left is the dismount toe hand. Full twisting double back and fighting for it. Early in the season, she struggled a little bit on this event and what Justin and Liz do so well as they make the needed adjustments. She kept tipping over cast or over amping some of the elements. Well, you noticed her first two casts were straight body. That was the key that kept her on point, and now she's been consistent on the back part of this season. Justin told me before the meet that their landings were so shoddy at the beginning of the season, they just worked on those, put out a springboard and an eight inch mat, and just practiced landings to stick them and hold them. And he said it made a difference. Sometimes you gotta go back to the fundamentals. Here's Roberson. 
Jocelyn Goings got a 9.875 on beam for Washington. So all four of their scores are 9.8 and above. They just need one more from Rubberson or Burleson. She is a powerful gymnast. You can see that in her opening leap pass. She has a unique tumbling series. You see most gymnasts incorporate that back handspring. Both of her skills have no hands. She moves into it right here, setting up. Two layout step outs connected. Oh, nice save trying to cover it with that choreography. score at this point is a 9-8, so that's what they're going to be wanting to knock out. 9-9 nine, nine for Paulina Trotz. That is a big score for UCLA at exactly the right time. So now Felicia Hano steps up, and she needs better than a 9-8 to keep UCLA in front. Needs better than a 9-8-2-5 to keep UCLA in front. Big first tumbling pass, double layout. Wow. Hano is ranked top 10 in the country on the floor. That was a beautiful double layout to start the routine. High flying, perfect form in the air, and landed with that chest completely up. Coming right back combination and dancing right out of it. Yeah. Teammates in the background <laughs> as she gets ready for one of the fan favorite parts of her routine, the worm. You can see the red blending into the blue. Playing right to the UCLA fans, they're sitting right behind us. Tumbling past double kite. Chest forward a little bit on that landing. Yep, try to cover it and hold on. They call her fish. She needed better than a 9825. We'll give it to you when we have it. 995 for McKenna Merrill Giles. Well, Utah has done all they can, but now they need to drop that 98. And who better than Michaela Skinner? One more time. Skinner is asked to save Utah. On the vault, final performance for Utah. <laughs> Great vault, little bounce, but let's see what it is. Well, like Elizabeth Price, we saw in the first session, the most difficult vault in the competition, Yurchenko, double full. She makes it look so easy. Look at that, position in the air, little hop back on the landing. It does start from a 10.0, so it still should be a solid score. Got to be in the 9-9 neighborhood. 9-8-5 for Kiana George. Back-to-backs here, Mashank and George. And for California, they made a change at the end of their rotation. Emmy Watterson. First and only appearance tonight. And the judge is holding things up for just a second. Felicia Hano for UCLA got a 9-9 on the floor. So the Bruins are still holding on, but let's wait and see what Michaela Skinner just got. Skinner's score is in. She got a 9-9. Beautiful line. Straight into the handstand, down to the pack salto. Combination up to the high bar. Shaposh half. Combination work at the end. Very nice routine. 
She even had to wait for the judges. That's not easy to do. Is that a star is born right there? Well, let me tell you, to be in that position right now at the Pac-12, great experience for these athletes. The only way to get good at competition under pressure and learn how to handle it is to be in the moment and do it. Roberson 985, everybody's coming alive here at the end of this thing. Haley Burleson. from Asheville, North Carolina, leading the team coming in with 16 individual victories. Side aerial in combination with the lead pass. She had 14 wins last year. On this event, she just takes her time, moving effortlessly in and out of every skill. Gorgeous flexibility on the leaps and jumps. Watterson got a 9875 for California. All that's left is the dismount combination, side aerial, full twist. Unbelievable rotation for Washington here in that final event. They knew they were great at the balance beam. They came in on a mission, the low score at 9-8. That is a strong rotation. And, and for both California and Washington with this cacophony of noise going around them, and it's all gonna come down to Caitlin Ohashi. On the floor for UCLA. She's ranked number two in the country. She has three perfect tens, and all she needs is a 9-6. This is it. Such a fun routine right here. She performs to Michael Jackson. T-shirt in the background says it all. Believe in yourself. and dances right out of that big double layout. Woo! Combination. Woo! Little moonwalk in the middle, UCLA fans on their feet. Championship just got to finish it. Everybody's favorite as it drops to the split. <laughs> Kaylin Ohashi in the Bruins. Utah's got nothing to hang their heads about. They went 49-475 in the final rotation. UCLA just answered the call. It's been a great rivalry all season long. UCLA beat the Red Rocks in Reno, the Elevate the Stage meet in January. In February, at home, the Bruins leading the Red Rocks, but Utah never gave up, rallied, and won it late. They come here one more time, and it looks like UCLA is going to be just a little bit better at the Pac-12 championships in Tucson, and there's a chance they can see each other again. <laughs> Not at the regionals. Utah is going to host a regional. UCLA won't be sent there. 
but they may see each other again in the semifinals to the Super Six or maybe in the finals. Well, these are two very strong teams. You know, neither of them had a perfect night. They both opened the door early. UCLA finished on two of their best events, the balance beam and floor exercise, putting up huge scores. And that's really what it came down to, is every single tenth, those nine nines, make such a big difference. The final score is in for Ohashi. She gets a 9.95 again. She just needed a 9.6. And Ohashi has started the dance party for UCLA. The Bruins are champions once again. That's 18 all-time for UCLA, more than any other school in the conference. This Pac-12 Women's Gymnastics Championship is brought to you by Opus Bank. Opus Bank, the official bank of the Pac-12 Conference. And by State Farm. State Farm is here to help life go right. That is Old Main, the original building that still stands here on campus at the University of Arizona. Cross campus inside McHale Center. The dance party continues for UCLA, who went 49-7 in that final rotation on floor to lock out Utah, who had a good rotation of 49-475 on vault. It all adds up to a 197-725. That's another Pac-12 championship for the Bruins of UCLA. Amanda coming in, we knew exactly what we wanted to see. We wanted to see it go down to the wire, and it did. And finally, the trophy can be presented to the champions this year. UCLA earned it. Well, they opened the door in those first rotations, to be honest with you, and that put everybody on edge. But they stayed cool and calm on those back two events, the balance beam, they picked up momentum, and then they went into the floor exercise, their best event, and that sealed the deal. That's the picture that every team wants when you go to camp. You want to hold the Pac-12 trophy high above and celebrate with your friends who made the trip. You get on the 10 in Westwood, and you don't take your foot off the gas until you see Tucson. One special. This one makes this it makes it so so I can't even speak right now. I'm speechless. It makes it so special to be here with my teammates. We have so much love for each other and the way we fought. That's how the Bruins are. That's just how we roll. That's how strong we are, and that's what makes it so special because we fought through the entire team. You had an extremely uncharacteristic mistake on bars and came back with a 10 on beam. What was going through your mind before you beam routine? What was going through my mind is just have fun, just relax, do it for my teammates because I know they needed that score and I know that I can do it for them. And so it was all for them. And I said that was for you guys as soon as I landed. What was your favorite part of this meet? Everything, to be honest. From the beginning when we were struggling a little bit till the end how we fought, the whole thing was just how characteristic we are and it just shows how strong we are mentally and it's going to be a great championship season. <laughs> Good job, Pang. Thanks, Sam. Thanks. Pang Pang Lee picks up her eighth perfect 10 and after what happened on bars, she comes all the way back and throws up the 10 on beam. Last year was Kyla Ross who had the perfect 10 on beam. Kyla Ross was awesome again all night long. She ends up winning the all around and she is our Utah life elevated gymnast of the meet. Well, she has beautiful technique, stunning landing there. She comes right back. They had some struggles on bars while she delivered in that anchor spot, nailing the dismount balance beam she's always known for. Solid there, sticking that landing. And then on floor exercise, I thought the score was a little low, 9.875. She was clean throughout. That's her back one and a half front layout. She has been a consistent force for the UCLA Bruins throughout this season. Kyla Ross is the first gymnast ever to win Olympic, World, and NCAA championships. And now she can add another title, Pac-12 champion. She's with Sam. You've had won so many titles in your career. What makes this one unique? This one was for the team, and I think we came in today just saying we're all in, we're bought in. We're doing this for a bigger purpose. It's for the team. So coming in today, I just did everything for my team, and that's why it's extra special just coming out with that team Pac-12 championship. It's super amazing. There were a couple mistakes on bars, but you were able to get them back on track with your 9.975. What was going through your mind before your bar routine? 
Um, I've had a lot of fun being the, lead, the um, anchor on bars this year. It's definitely a new position for me, and I just knew the whole time I just, that's my job is to come in and close it up for the bar team. So before I went, Chris came up to me. He's like, you got this. Give us a 10. And so I just went in just being confident, and I think that's what helped just get the job done. Before your floor routine, I heard Joe say, don't hold back and have fun. Was that the mindset that you went in the last event with? Definitely. I think floor has definitely improved this year. So just going in and having fun, I think I definitely have changed my mindset. I definitely used to be a little bit nervous on this event, but this year just coming up and competing floor consistently has really boosted my confidence on that event. So it's been awesome to be able to contribute and all around for my team and to get the, to get the championship is awesome. Congratulations. Thanks, Thank Kyla. Thank you. Congratulations to Kyla Ross, who wins the all-around 39-675, and to the Bruins, who win it with a 197-725. Utah finishes second. Utah, the only conference team to always finish in the top two. 197-350. California, 197 flat. The Gold Bears finished sixth last year. That's going to do it for us. For Mark Wilson, Alan Brum, Amanda Borden, and Sam Peshek, I'm Jim Watson. So long from Tucson, but don't run off. We send you back to the Bay Area. Ashley Adamson in San Francisco. We now join this program.